Hi everyone and welcome back. So in the previous video we were talking about uh, adding the docker and docker compose file. So I have added it because we have a node.js and uh, mysql. Node.js container want to talk to mysql. So here is my node.js container and here is my mysql container. So you can see in this docker compose file I have these two containers and I have a small docker file which will help me to build the container and finally I'm exposing 3000 port and running this npm run debug command De debug command is doing nothing but pointing to node mode so it will start my application so if you wanted to know more about how docker works how to create docker containers how to write docker file how to write docker compose viable file you can take a look on my another playlist but in in layman terms or in simple terms we can say that we have a MongoDB, we have a MySQL, we have a Node.js, we have some other application we wanted to run together then you can wrap every service inside a docker compose file here this is taking care of creating a node container and running Node.js into that container so these are like small Linux containers you can say on my host operating system this is MySQL and this is the image okay and this is the docker file this is building this particular docker file in the current working directory okay and now we can see that we have these two different containers one is a mysql and one is a node.js okay and my application is running there if i just zoom it here we can see the same logs uh, it is starting the nextjs application and now if it, we can talk about database module here this is database module and we have provided this configuration uh, which is accessing user and customer entity right now you can access the user repository and customer customer repository in your own modules okay so we have created database now we can create let, let me just create another module same as customer instead of modifying it so i'll just rename it to simple user okay and now what will be the difference between this and that is we'll just convert this into user module and in the user module now instead of doing it it is a mongoose module we will do type or a module it should pop up or we can just get it from here type or a module dot for feature we have to do instead of for root and we just need to provide the entity which we are going to access in the user module okay type or module dot uh, for feature we can just import this here let's just type or we don't need mongoose no module so we'll just remove it and in that case uh, in the for feature what we can specify is the entity so you, if you see what it is taking it is taking the entity array so I will just import user entity here and what I what it means is I am going to access user entity in this particular module so I imported user entity this should be I think in an array because you can access you can provide a multiple entity like I also have customer entity right now I can access both both of these entities in my services okay for now I will just create a customer controller and customer service customer controller we can keep same because it's not it is not going to be different for the mongodb or mysql okay here only the methods will be different here we are doing this list customer create customer get customer right so let's go to our service here we will do the main important thing this is all about injection database injection okay and how it works is we just need to provide so here we are injecting doing the inject model similarly what we do in terms of when we are talking about mysql we inject inject repository like user repository or customer repository and all that we have to import in our inject in our service okay that we can simply uh, see in particular module like uh, here we have a service so what we will do is inject repository user 
and that particular entity okay so this is constructor what we will do is inject repository we are getting from type ORM and the entity name it can be like I wanted to access user here and this is user entity so we are getting user entity from okay so let me just check it we need to go one more back okay we got the user entity we can just remove the things which we are not using this is fine now instead of uh, doing this customer model here we will just put it a user repo now this is all mysql stuff how we are doing queries and all but queries kind of same this dot customer repo dot here you can see all the different methods find and I wanted to return all now what it is returning it is, should be returning customers of promise of user array this is entity array right if you see this what it is going to return it is going to return the entity array in the promise so we have to return that here uh, we can also talk about create method so what create method is doing is it should be able to create something right so in the DTO we are getting something and we will just save it in the type ORM way right so what we can do is we can just create a try catch block because we are saving and there might be possibility that we might get an error so it's safe that we just throw <coughs> throw new internal server exception only pass the error okay this is just our boundary conditions now we will get whatever is required thing so in the customer DTO I think we are expecting at least email from this customer DTO okay we got this email now we will create an object of this user const user equal to I think entity creation is kind of same everywhere we create the object of the entity and then user dot email equal to email which we have received it is complaining customer user okay we are considering this as a user okay customer DTO is will have a lot of things like email first name last name and I'm just extracting the email property type user let me just check this so this is our customer DTO we have to change it everywhere if you wanted to use it as a user DTO this is let's say user DTO user param DTO okay then let's go to our controller and just replace everything as a customer as a user okay that we will replace and here in the service this is customer DTO user DTO and user DTO contains this email property is email read only email okay we have to create our own interface what data we are getting okay for now let's put any and user we got the email property from there this email we are setting user wait a second we are not talking about capital user so this is user entity and user entity has a first name last name email also we need because I will be setting that email is a string is column okay user.email equal to email and we can just say return await this dot user repo dot save and just pass your user object I mean the fields can be anything they don't even worry about this I will just put a hard coded email for now 
because we have mixed the user and customer both okay this is how we will be able to save the user repo okay update is also kind of same thing you create the object and uh, then you update it so update is going to be the similar get customer is we can just copy and we can return what we need from get customer so await this dot user repo dot find by id should be there find find by id is find one okay so it will actually try to find one based on some condition here you can pass the user id okay if you are able to find a user this is actually user find activity so we can replace it with a user otherwise through a user not found exception or return the user okay here it should be user object not an array clear so similarly we have a remove customer so we can just write this in the terms of typo rm this dot user repository dot uh, okay let's do first find one because we have to first find it otherwise it will be not found exception then we can actually do await this dot user repo dot find dot destroy should be there user repo dot remove dot remove and what it is taking it is taking the entity object entity is an entity object based on so we got this user object so we can just pass this because this is what we wanted to remove and what this is going to remove this is going to return promise of entity object so this should be correct okay we just need to return it yeah so we have converted this mongodb style of service into a mysql type orm1 and what change we have done is we have actually injected the repository first user repo this you, you can inject anything like we have a customer entity also so in, inject repository customer customer repo and just customer right then we have created these methods list which is using the customer user repo dot find one user repo dot save user repo dot find one find one and then remove right all these the basic methods i will actually just push this particular uh, repository i mean this particular code after this now we are going to talk about advanced uh, mysql where you have multiple tables and multiple feature modules you are creating and writing the apis okay so i will be merging a different set of playlist with this now forwards because i already covered all these things uh, we will talk about the blog apis auth apis with this with the typo rm and mysql okay thanks everyone